Hello, and welcome to the Captain's Info presentation for 2v2 Sand Volleyball at UTA Intramural Sports. This presentation is regarding the Fall 2019 semester. In this presentation, we'll cover our policies, where we play, the rules of the game, our scheduling software, IM Leagues, and the league schedule, awards for our champions, upcoming events, and how to contact us. My name is Matt Holmquist, and I'm the coordinator for sport programs here at Campus Recreation. Travis Langford is the assistant director for sport programs. You will be interacting mostly with our student officials, the student supervisors, and the student program assistants, who is the highest level of management on any given night of activities. If you need to contact us, you can do so at imsports at uta.edu. Our website is uta.edu slash intramural sports. You can find links to our rules, handbook, policies and procedures, as well as other events that are going on at Campus Recreation. I Am Leagues is our scheduling software that we'll talk about. The rules in the handbook can also be found on I Am Leagues. Eligibility to play intramural sports is available to current UTA students, faculty and staff that have a MAC membership, and Campus Recreation membership holders. All of these are allowed to participate in intramural sports activities. Alumni must have a membership to play. All players are required to check in with the ID checker before the game. If you don't have your ID, you cannot play that night. Two Campus Recreation membership holders are allowed on a team, maximum. The MAC members must show proof of membership to play. Players are not allowed to play on two different teams in the same division. A random eligibility check is held on the field, and a full check is held in the intramural sports office. If the game in which a player signs in is a forfeit, they're still considered to have played in that game and to be on that team's roster. Players may be added at any point in the season or postseason, so should you have problems finding players on a given night, you can still add to your roster. Game time is forfeit time. If your team forfeits once, they will be assessed a $25 forfeit fee, and that fee has to be paid before the next scheduled game. If a team forfeits twice, they will be charged another forfeit fee, but will be ineligible for the playoffs. If the fee goes unpaid, the team will be dropped from the league altogether. Players will not be allowed to switch teams after the second week of the season. If they choose to do so before the second week, they have to sit out a minimum of one week as a waiver wire transfer penalty between teams. Our sportsmanship system is as follows. Teams will be awarded a sportsmanship grade for each game based on their conduct. A 4.0 or an A is above and beyond conduct and sportsmanship. Good conduct and sportsmanship will be assigned a B or a 3. Average conduct and sportsmanship is a 2. Below average conduct and sportsmanship is a 1. And an F or 0 points is poor conduct and sportsmanship. Teams must maintain a 2.5 average in order to be eligible for playoffs. And once in the playoffs, a team must maintain that 2.5 average in order to remain in the playoffs. The way our structure works in the playoffs is that every team makes the playoffs except for those that don't qualify because of sportsmanship or forfeit. Unsportsmanlike behavior will result in a caution, which could be penalties within the game, ejection, suspension, or a judicial hearing or dismissal from school in some of the most extreme cases. In all of our intramural sports sites, there is no smoking, no alcohol, and no tobacco products. All intramural sports participants play at their own risk, However, the Department of Campus Recreation encourages all participants to have medical insurance in case of injury. Every team makes the playoffs, except for teams that have two or more forfeits, or teams that default or forfeit greater than a combined 50% of their schedule games, or any teams with less than a 2.5 sportsmanship average. If there are enough teams, there will be two divisions, a competitive bracket with teams that have a win-loss record above 500, and teams that have a win-loss record below 500 will go into the recreational bracket. During playoffs, the scheduling is done online, and the priority of selection has to do with the standings, the seed during the regular season. That's decided primarily by win-loss record, and a tiebreaker will be sportsmanship, and then which team has more forfeits or defaults, if they've played head-to-head, -head, and finally our last tiebreaker is points against. Unfortunately, it is impossible to ensure that every team plays at their usual time. So be prepared to play on a day time that is not unusual. We don't reschedule games. Remember, you can still add players all the way through the championship game. 
We will be playing sand volleyball at the Maverick Activity Center, located at 500 West Netterman Drive. We're at the sand volleyball courts, which is out by the outdoor basketball courts. For sand volleyball, two players for each team are required to start the game. Divisions will exist for men's, fraternity, sorority, co-rec, and res hall. Players can play barefoot out on the sand courts, but no combat boots or hiking boots, anything hard like that can be worn. Tennis shoes or sandals can be worn if teams elect. However, there is no jewelry allowed while playing sand volleyball. Each match will be one game. The scoring style will be rally scoring, which means that a point will be scored on each serve, regardless of if you're the serving team or not. The first team to score 25 points, win by two, or a 30 point cap, will be declared the winner. Each match has a time limit of 25 minutes. If the match is not complete when the time expires, the team with the most points will win the match. At the beginning of the game, a coin toss or rock, paper, scissors will determine which team receives the choice of first serve, or they can choose the side of the court for the beginning of the match. We'll switch sides when the total number of points in the match scored is a multiple of 10. So if the score is seven to three, then 10 points have been scored, we'll switch. Same thing with five and five, 10 and zero. With sand volleyball on 2v2, teams must rotate servers after a side out. Teams will also self-officiate. In case of a dispute, an intramural sport supervisor will be present to mediate. If the decision is obvious, the supervisor might make a ruling on the play. If the decision is not obvious, the supervisor may suggest a replay of the point. Teams will play two games per week, and they'll be on Mondays or Thursdays, depending on which division you signed up for. We'll notify all players via IM Leagues if the game is canceled due to weather. You can also follow us on social media, and we'll post there. At UTA IM Sports on Twitter is one of our primary ways of communicating. Please ensure that all players are on the roster before the first game, because this year, intramural sports staff will not be adding players to the roster on site. They can assist captains if there are any questions, but it is the responsibility of the captain to add or approve all roster changes. Staff will not manually add players to the roster on site. The awards for champions include a t-shirt for the competitive division champions and a wing party. For the t-shirt, a player must play in at least two games, including the playoffs, to be eligible for their t-shirt. If a player misses the championship game, but they played in two games throughout the season and playoffs, they can come into the intramural sports office to pick up their shirt as late as the end of the semester. Each team will also receive a wing party at Pluckers in Arlington. This is good for 100 wings per team, and you must present the coupon to receive the wings. Even though you're receiving 100 free wings, you're still being served by the staff, so please tip them as if you were ordering 100 wings. You must use this coupon before the end of the semester, which is defined as the Friday after graduation. If you're a volleyball fan, we'll have indoor volleyball teams that register ending on October 7th. If you have some other sports you'd like to participate in, we have outdoor soccer, which registration ends on September 9th, kickball, registration ending on the 16th, men's and women's flag football on September 30th, and 3v3 basketball, which ends on October 14th. Just as with sand volleyball, the time slots will be first come, first served, so if you have time restrictions or you'd like to make sure your team gets in the division that you like, please sign up soon. We also have oozeball, which is mud volleyball. This is voted the number one tradition at UTA by students. Please sign up for this and come on out. Let us know if you have any questions about oozeball. Here's our contact information, website, phone number, email. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.